Hi, I'm Brennan with Discover Battery, and today we're back with another installment of our What's in the Box series. We'll be primarily focusing on the design review and teardown of our new Discover Lithium Blue product. I've also got a few other competitor samples. Uh, we'll be looking at those at the same time. Really the goal is for you to walk away with a better understanding of design philosophy, what goes on in making a lithium battery, uh, different decisions the manufacturer can make that uh, impact performance, reliability, and just a better overall customer experience. Before we really get into it, just a quick note on some specs and footprints. So right here, we've got two Group 31 footprints, both 12 volt nominal. Now this is a Group 24. Uh, this one's actually 12 volt nominal uh, and GC12. So 100 amp hour, 100 amp hour, 100 amp hour, a bit of a smaller footprint so you can get some more energy density. Uh, also of note, these are available 12, 24, and 36 volt variants. With that being said, let's get inside the box. All right, so here we are with another Group 31 form factor, 12 volt, 100 amp hour uh, from a well-known brand. Uh, right off the bat, I can see there is a built-in handle here, just a nylon strap. Uh, there is no heat sinking, so if you're really using high uh, charge or discharge rates, all that heat from the BMS is staying inside. There's also no external fusing, uh, so if you have a really high current event, you will be relying on the BMS to interrupt that. Uh, and if that BMS fails under those circumstances, this is completely sealed, so it's not field serviceable, it's not serviceable at all. Uh, also being sealed, I don't see any vents, uh, gore vents to help uh, equalize internal external pressure or deal with any moisture. Also, there's no uh, Bluetooth app internally here, so if you need to uh, get a state of charge uh, or monitor voltage and current, you're gonna be looking at a few hundred bucks for an external uh, device to do that for you. All right, what you see before you is the next uh, battery we'll be having a look at. Uh, quickly at the top, you'll see uh, flag pulls as opposed to button or stud. I always find these a little bit more difficult to work with. That's just in terms of getting your cables on, where you want them to go, uh, getting it all put together, torqued properly, routed where you want it. Uh, so just a small detail to look for there. Let's get that out of the way. Also, cover is epoxied on. That's not coming off, uh, not serviceable. Also, uh, no Bluetooth, no diagnostics, uh, no live data. So if you need that in your application, you're gonna have to go buy uh, yet again another component to do that for you. Okay, so what you see before you is the blue. Uh, right off the bat, let's have a walk around. You'll notice uh, integrated terminal covers. These are really nice, especially when you're going to parallel batteries. That's when you're connecting more than one. Uh, oftentimes it can be hard to find uh, terminal covers that allow for parallel connections. Looking around, stud terminals. These are also really handy for when you are paralleling batteries. Uh, also right off the bat, the fuse external to the product. So this is field serviceable. These are really nice if you're in situations with uh, really high current events, uh, short circuits, what have you. You want this fuse to go uh, and pop before you could possibly cause damage to the BMS. Um, so once again, just a field serviceable component, swap it out, you're back in business. Also walking around, you can see built-in automotive style hold downs. Uh, that just allows you to place this battery in a common battery box that you may already have and use those same automotive style hold downs. Moving back up top, integrated suitcase handle. Uh, these are just really nice. If your battery, uh, you walk it down to your boat, you install it, it's a trolling boat. Uh, end of the day, you take it back out, go back to the cabin to charge. This makes it really easy to transport, move around when it's not fixed in location uh, for the duration of its life. Furthermore, you've got a gore vent there. These are uh, to help equalize the pressure from outside the battery, inside. So once again, this is IP67, it's sealed. We wanna equalize that pressure, reduce internal condensation and moisture. Also, you notice the external heat sink. So this really helps us pull out, draw out the heat that that BMS is uh, creating during really high charge rates or high discharge rates. Once again, think of your computer. Uh, electronics just run better when they're cooler. 
What causes BMS failure? It's really usually a high current, high inductive uh, situation. What does that mean? Think direct motor loads, or if you've got really long cables between your loads and the battery itself, um, it's when you have those scenarios, lots of current, and the battery has to open its relay. If there's too much inductance to handle, you'll damage the internal relay. Uh, but it's okay because this whole component is serviceable. So instead of having to replace the entire battery, new BMS, new cover, you're back in business. Also, Bluetooth app, what does that mean? Uh, you can see how much energy is left in the battery. You can see the state of charge. So if you're waking up, you're dry camping, you're not quite sure, can I get away with making one more pot of coffee? Uh, can I cook my breakfast? Just pull out that app, you've got a good indication of how much juice is left. Uh, same thing for fishing, you know? Can I make it a few more hours or should I start heading home now? Okay, so I've hacked the top off this one. Let's go ahead, remove the internals, have a look at the cell and module design, as well as the BMS. Okay, so peeling back some of this foam fit material, what you'll see is uh, a number of 26650 cells. If I'm not mistaken, about 100. Um, some fairly common nickel tab. What's kind of interesting is, I presume this pack's actually uh, wrapped like a sandwich. So initial welding is done in a big long line. They fold back half of it on, its, on, on itself and then finish those cell welds. So moving up uh, to the BMS, what you'll see here is uh, we've got some fine uh, stranded wire, nice and flexible. Uh, the BMS is actually just sitting uh, on top of this FR4 board with four nylon st uh, standoffs. Also, here's all the voltage pickups. It doesn't look like there's actually a cell temperature pickup. So this BMS is not monitoring cell temperature at all. Uh, moving up, here's the heat sink. Uh, so when you're really going to be using this battery, you're running a microwave, making your coffee, uh, lots of current, lots of heat. So just like a computer, you want to keep your power electronics uh, nice and cool. That's when they run the best. Uh, with this, all that heat's going to reside in the battery. Uh, because it's sealed, there's no external heat sink. It's not getting out. All right, uh, spinning this around, I just noticed um, here you'll see the cell block pickups. Um, that's just going to be vibrating around uh, as you go down the road. Uh, as you know, copper work hardens, so there's potential that that joint may fatigue over time. And that's about it for this one. Uh, so. You can see lots of parts, uh, presumably lots of labor. Uh, really, you want to evaluate all this stuff in terms of uh, manufacturability and reliability. Um, let's get it back in the case. And we're done with this one. Uh, okay. So I was able to use a jigsaw to get this off carefully, uh, something I don't want to do again, but that's going to give you the opportunity to look inside. So let's do it. So right off the bat, we see more fitment material uh, holding it together. That's interesting. Kind of a loose design. So even though these cell modules are in a little cradle, um, they're really free to move around there. 26650 cells, uh, don't have a cell count again, but likely close to 100 or so. Uh, if you look closely, uh, just really thin nickel sheet uh, holding that together, a few spot welds, um, that's interesting. So moving on up from the uh, cell module, uh, let's have a closer look at the BMS. It's actually uh, tied down to this plastic sheet using brass standoffs, and this clips in place. Now there's lots of hot glue. So hot glue holding down voltage uh, sensors. There's actually a temperature sensor on the cell block. So that's nice. Here, we've got uh, five stranded cables carrying our current from the cell to the BMS and back to the terminal. So uh, a little bit more beefy than the battery we last looked at. Once again, here's the heat sink. Uh, so that's gonna pull a lot of the heat away from the electronics uh, during high loads or really high uh, charge rates. Uh, but all that heat's just going to reside in the battery. And really what that means is if you've got a high load, you're going to be able to run it for a shorter amount of time. 
because these cells have a working temperature range. And once it gets too high, the BMS must interrupt it. Okay, so that's a good look in there. Hopefully you've learned something. Once again, high part count, lots of labor, lots of variability. Um, you want to see a nice repeatable process for long-term quality and performance. Uh, let's see if I can get this back in the case. I'll do it later. Let's go ahead and pull up the cells in the cell module. So what you can see here is just four prismatic cells. Really clean design. There's a cell cradle at either end holding it together. This is one nice rigid block. There's no hot glue. There's no foam fitment material holding it in the case. If you look really closely, you'll see that there's actually receiving points in the case where this gets bolted down. This all becomes one nice tight structure, uh, really good for vibration uh, resilience. Flipping around, what you can see is a few bus bar connections. Now these are our flexible bus bar up to the BMS, so purpose built. Uh, they help with assemblability. They're designed to bend the right way. So what you'll see here is a lack of spot welds. Everything's held down with uh, bolts, nicely torqued, uh, your bus bar. So what you see is a purpose-built product designed for reliability. It's gonna perform just as well in year one uh, as it will in year five. Back to serviceability. So your cells, they stay in the case. Uh, if the BMS is damaged, it needs replacement. Here's the part. This isn't dangerous goods, the cells are. So this can be shipped really easily, really quickly. Uh, quick to install, nuts and bolts, uh, no fancy tools are required. So as you can see, a really well thought out product. Every component has been designed with the components around it in mind. Fewer parts, a more repeatable operation for manufacturers, less operator variability. What does that mean for you? It means you're getting a reliable battery that has one of the industry's best warranties. All right, well, thanks for coming along for the ride. I hope you gained a lot of knowledge. As a little bit of a takeaway, remember uh, to evaluate things that are important to you, be it field serviceability, your terminal configurations, how those cells are put together in terms of reliability and performance, and really that construction of the BMS and what it means for long-term performance and reliability. Once again, don't forget to hop online. You can see some more of our product and teardown videos. Uh, as well as jump to the website and get some more information on different voltages, uh, models, capacities that may be more appropriate for you.